But it get, you have no idea how cold it gets in Ottawa. In fact, last winter it was so cold, Justin Trudeau was seen with his hands in his own pockets. Um, <laughs> there it is. Clinton Jaws. Pierre Poliev, he's in town. He's right over there. He's in Vancouver talking. And he's poking at Trudeau. Let's watch it together because it's, it's fun. It's fun to make fun of Trudeau, is it not? And I got nothing better to do. So let's watch it together. Grab a hoagie, put in a nicotine pouch, and let's watch it. We're not going to watch the whole thing. It's 45 minutes long, but we're going to watch some of it. Around. Let's start with the, the state of play in Canada. Uh -huh. After eight years of Justin Trudeau and the NDP, everything costs more. A carbon tax that is scheduled to quadruple over the next five and a half years and which will go up on April 1st. Now, the NDP in this province has British Columbia. agreed to implement that tax. Where in other provinces, Thanks, guys. the local government has said no and therefore Trudeau has imposed it from above. Here, the NDP has enthusiastically embraced the goal of raising energy prices on working class families and has committed to go ahead with the hike this coming April 1st. Wonderful. A 23% carbon tax Just hike. Just 23%. That will make life more expensive for everyday Canadians who are already unable to eat. This is happening in the context of 2 million annual visits, 2 million annual visits to food banks. You want to know the real reason for that? A massive 32% increase over eight years ago. We have a new phenomenon in Canada. It's a Facebook network with 8,000 members called the Dumpster Diving Network. This is a group of Canadians who share tips on how you can eat out of a garbage can. I'm going to tell you why that in is. In Canada. You only have to take a drive around communities uh, across this country to see the, dent the tent cities that pop up. See, I kind of disagree with him here. The reason why there's dumpster diving it's the homeless people that are doing it. It's record high. Why is it? Because drugs are free. Drugs are safe, right? That's why. They made them legal. There's more drug heads, addicts, criminals. And when they get their free drugs and they get their free money, they run out of the money. They're in your backyard ripping your stuff off. This existed in the downtown east side of Vancouver, for some time. Lots of tents, yeah. The model of downtown east side has been spread right across the country. The world. And Liberal. this is exactly the worst time to raise the cost of food. Liberal. And that is why I am announcing today Doi. that I'm calling on NDP Premier David Eby. Oh, what a... And Justin Trudeau and Eby. Jagmeet Singh to cancel the April 1st carbon tax hike, spike the hike, and axe the tax. I'm sure they're going to listen to you. E.B. You don't get more sketchy than E.B. Wrote a book. How to sue a cop. That's E.B. That's, that's e. <laughs> Insane. Converting gas into a liquid is a process of cooling it down. And what do we have in Canada? Our most abundant national, natural resource is cold weather. <laughs> that you don't know anything about that in British Columbia. So no complaining for many of you, but it get, you have no idea how cold it gets in Ottawa. In fact, last winter it was so cold, Justin Trudeau was seen with his hands in his own pockets. Um, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. You know, I'll give you an example of this. There's another tax hike coming. All the taxes that are going up after, uh, on April 1st, it's enough to drive a man to drink. But they're taxing that too. There's a beer tax going up on April 1st. So the Association of Beer Producers is running an ad, and they say in the ad that Ottawa is raising beer taxes. Mm. And so I asked one of the CEOs, I said, who is Ottawa? I've never met him. Who's this guy? What does he look like? Handsome guy, tall, fluffy hair, baby blue eyes. Like, who is Ottawa? Dark hair. Why is the ad saying Ottawa is raising beer tax? Ottawa is not raising beer taxes. Justin Trudeau and the NDP are raising beer taxes. Yeah, it's a media. I know a lot of corporate leaders don't want to say things like that because they want to get along with everybody. But sucking up to the people who are doing the damage has only got us into this mess in the first place. I just so like, like listening to this guy. It's time for the business leadership 
to, to speak How can you not? the truth. Vancouver is now the third most expensive housing market in the world. Just the world. Median income to median housing prices. UBS found in 2022 Toronto was the worst housing bubble on planet Earth. Both of them more expensive than New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, London, England, and even Singapore. Yeah, An island. Have to move there. An island with 2,000 times more people per square kilometer than Canadians. Why is that? We have the most mortgage debt by far of any G7 country as a share of our GDP. Why? We have the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have by far the most land and we spend by far the most money building homes. Yeah. How is this possible? How is this possible? How? We have more land, labor, and lumber than anyone, and yet we can't build homes. Well, the answer is government is standing in the way. What is the number one cost to building a new home in Vancouver today? Land? Labor? Lumber? Permits. Government represents 60% of the cost of a newly built home in Vancouver today. 60%. Did you know that? So the 40% is what you use to pay for the worker, for all the lumber and the drywall and the land. This is insane. And what are you going to do? You're going to vote for Trudeau again? <laughs> okay. You can't. How can you not vote for this guy? I think that we've been too polite for too long with the politicians who caused this mess. My common sense plan is... Exactly. We've been too polite. And the media, they don't like his tone. You gotta love his tone. Why be polite now? Start being a dick. We had a promise in this country that if you followed the law, you could live a safe, peaceful life. That promise, too, is broken after eight years of Justin Trudeau. His catch and release laws... Bill C-75, for example, allows the same repeat violent offenders to be released within hours of their arrest. The Vancouver police had to arrest or charge the same 40 offenders 6,000 times. The majority of crime is done by a small amount of people. Something like that. I can't remember crime prevention stuff and rattling around in my head. That's the case everywhere. Prolific offenders. And what he's saying is, we're releasing the prolific offenders. And then we have to catch them again. Catch and release. And it really is. I'm telling you right now. If, somebody's, if somebody ever tells you they're in prison, they ever went to prison, they did something pretty bad. Okay, they actually did it. You don't go to prison in Canada. In one year, 6,000 arrests for 40 offenders. That's Waste 150 of time. arrests per offender per year. What's the point? The good news is we don't have a lot of criminals. The bad news is they're very productive. Uh, <laughs> oh, you cheeky monkey. The, solu the, the further good news is the solution is so obvious. What's that? Keep them in jail. What? I mean, we all understand if a young person That's makes a mistake. That's not liberal. Keep them in jail? You want to make me safe? A young person makes My a mistake. They should be rehabilitated and given a second chance, of course. But we're not talking about that here. No, we're not. We're talking about the career criminals who literally commit as many crimes as their waking hours will allow them to do. They have The, the police have this saying now. I know it's not very um, polite to say. They, they call it FIDO. When they see a, a crime in progress, they say, forget it, drive on. It's actually not forget it. It's something else. F it. But they just drive on. And they <laughs> I got to make a shirt. Fido. Me with waving out a cop car window or something. Beautiful. I mean, I won't say anymore. They tell me why. Because they know that if they arrest the guy, he'll be back on the streets in a couple of hours. Yep. So the risk to their physical safety is not worth taking them off the, that criminal off the street for 45 minutes. So they just drive on. We have uh, police officers who will tell you that they're not even done the paperwork on the arrest and the offender is back out on the street. All the time. Reoffending. Even when Every they're convicted case. under liberal legislation backed by the NDP, they get house arrest. So a career car thief can sit at home and watch Netflix or, or, or play Grand Theft Auto. Um, while he's actually doing his sentence.
So a common sense conservative government will, will make it so that repeat violent offenders are no longer eligible for immediate bail. It will be jail and not bail. Good. It will be the full sentences, not early parole. It will be mandatory prison time for the repeat offenders, and we will end the, the carnage of drugs in our streets. We were told that decriminalizing crack, heroin, cocaine, Here and other go. hard drugs was proven by all the experts to work. Crack. And then if we added to that taxpayer-subsidized opioids, which they called, ironically, a safe supply. That What's opioids? <laughs> Fentanyl, meth, cocaine, heroin. Legalized. That's why there's dumpster divers. Legalized. Creating more so-called homeless people, creating more criminals, creating garbage. We were told that decriminalizing crack, heroin, cocaine, and other hard drugs was proven by all the experts to work. And then if we added to that taxpayer-subsidized opioids, taxpayer. which they called, ironically, a safe supply, that somehow this was going to uh, protect addicts from overdoses. What has happened? The data's in. The debate is over. We've had 40,000 overdose deaths in the last eight years, a 200% increase. And where these policies have been tried most enthusiastically, the results have been the most horrifying. BC is ground zero because not only does Justin Trudeau's policies apply here, but David Eby and the NDP policies have applied here as well. Just hearing that name drives me crazy, puts little my hair stand up. The Eby. If you guys think it's working, he just proved to you it's not working. Safe drugs, no. No, no there's no such thing, okay? Whatever happened to users are losers. Please bring it back. I don't care about the stigma. We need the stigma. It's bad. That's what I tell my kids. Do you not tell your children that? And that is why, they, what they did is they took a walk. Eby will get elected. You watch, he'll get elected again. And that is why, they, what they did is they took a walk down the downtown east side 10 years ago. And they said, why don't we try this everywhere? And they expanded the model nationwide. And the Zombies down there, okay? Zombies, if you don't know. Complete zombies. Shaking in and a bacon. What's the answer? You apprehend every single one of them. And they expanded the model nationwide. I really believe this. No more probation, no more bail, jail. Keep them in jail, but apprehend the homeless. <laughs> it sounds weird to say, but you're convinced because you've been told for so long, oh, they're homeless. They need food and clothing and money and drugs. No, no, I'm sorry. You don't get that. You don't get that. If you're homeless, he says treatment, okay? I say apprehension, put him in an institution. You can't leave until you get better, okay? You're, you're actually hurting them more and you're creating a bigger community by, by giving them all this money and all these drugs. And if they die, we just Narcan them back to life and they go back off onto the street. You want, you want to save these people? You want to really help them? You allow police to apprehend again. We're not allowed to apprehend. The Mental Health Act is a joke. Pharmaceutical grade opioids. And now, what is the so-called safe supply? Pharmaceutical grade opioids, profiting the same companies to give out the same drugs that caused the crisis in the first place. And just yesterday, the RCMP confirmed that thousands of these pills have made their way into Prince the George. hands of organized crime. So your tax dollar. Prince George, that happened. They seized, the RCMP seized a, a bundle. And it was people getting these free drugs and selling them to organized crime. <laughs> Working out really good. So look at EB a different way now, okay? And Jeg Meats. So your tax dollars are paying for organized criminals to get their hands on the same pharmaceutical drugs that caused the crisis in the first place. This is insanity. I will put an end to it. We will Thank stop you. funding drugs and start funding treatment and recovery to bring our loved ones home drug free. And apprehension. Don't forget about apprehension. Anyways, I can't get enough. Maybe I'm a loser. Bye bye. Thank you.